नमस्कार दोस्तों लिट ई सिटी द यूट्यूब चैनल वेलकम्स यू ऑल वन सेकेंड तो दोस्तों आज की हमारी जो क्लास है इट विल फोकस ऑन सम की टर्म्स सम इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड विद कल्चरल स्टडीज दीज टर्म्स आर फ्रॉम द रिसेंट डेवलपमेंट इन दिन द फील्ड ऑफ कल्चरल स्टडीज दे आर नॉट ओनली रिलेटेड विद लिटरेचर दे आर बेसिक बेसिकली टेकन फ्रॉम the socio technological sphere of the life and are very relevant for your coming examination so please focus on these terms i will try to make i will try my best to make you understand these terms okay friends we will start our today's lecture with our first term camp okay friends camp this term basically is a term which became popular in the post modern discourse you all know what is post modern discourse it is rather a very different take from the uh, philosophers and literary writers point of view of 50s and 60s post modern uh, writers thinkers they consider they think about the world in completely different opposite terms the first english definition of the term relate uh, appeared in quite early you can see in 1909 of oxford english dictionary and the uh, that definition of camp was ostentatious exaggerated affected theatrical look at the adjectives you will find a very interesting fact that these adjectives are generally applied whenever we talk about the post modern effect of arts and literature effeminate or homosexual pertaining to characteristics of homosexuals dear friends it is the year is 1909 quite early when there was no scope for uh, we can say queer studies or homosexuality or we can say gender bender so these are the terms which which were uh, associated with the term camp as early as in 1909 now uh, later susan sontag she is a very important na uh, name and in fact in cultural studies it is susan sontag who is associated with this term she is an american intellectual and writer best known for her essays on modern culture and she defined this term camp in her now very popular essay notes on camp please remember the name of this essay please remember her definition of the camp according to her what is camp it is a sensibility it is a type of sensibility it is a type of experience that revels that feels pleasure in artifice not natural but artifice stylization theatricalization irony playfulness and exaggeration rather than content you can understand how it is complete reversal of the modernism jahan modernism ke andar content par focus hai naturality par focus hai uh, versimilitude par focus hai on the other hand camp focuses on all these factors and you will uh, you will remember that the same things have been pointed out by bertolt brecht and other marxist writers in their alienation effect or a theory in uh, in their epic theater also in which they try to put the artifice on the surface Her, she further says this is very famous line the hallmark of camp is the spirit of extravagance this is uh, this definition you will find in her essay notes on camp she wrote in her seminal essay and this essay presented 58 aspects of the sensibility among other things sontag described camp as being playful and anti serious these are the two qualities which you must remember that all modern all recent scholars associate with the quality of camp the whole point of camp is to dethrone the serious once again you can understand it in the uh, post uh, modernist uh, uh, way that they don't want to deal with the serious it is consistently aesthetic experience 
or artificial aesthetic experience of the world it incarnates it presents a victory of style over content content is uh, less important than style aesthetic is more important than morality and irony is more important than tragedy all these are essential feature of any postmodern criteria here we come to our second term which is taken from the technosphere of our life modern life and the term is cybernetics dear friends cybernetics the term was originally coined by an american mathematician norbert wiener and in 1940s he coined this term cybernetics to denote the entire field of control and communication these two terms control and communication whether in machine or in animal he derived the term from the ancient greek word kybernetes which means a steersman or a helmsman just like a steersman or helmsman steers or guides a particular vessel a ship around the water similarly cybernetics has both communication and control this etymology implies the study of how information flows so similarly how a vessel a boat a ship flows in the water how it is used to control the system just like a steersman or a helmsman control uh, the movement of the the path of the ship similarly cybernetics also look at who is controlling the flow of information whether it is mechanical biological or social we need connects control or we can say action taken in hope of achieving goal that is called control with communication connection and information flow between the actor and the environment so control and communication they are connected and he is pointing out that effective action requires communication now uh, related with cybernetics the recent cultural theory how this cybernetics which is purely and we can say a technological uh, kind of term it is related with cultural theory because it gave impetus it gave uh, we can say inspiration to the emergence of accelerationism accelerationism is uh, the desire to accelerate the progress the mechanical progress of humanity In 1995, Sadie Plant, Plant, Mark Fisher, Nick Clegg, and many other students and academics at Warwick University, England, they created a radical new institution, the Cybernetic Cultural Research Unit, or CCRU. Uh, it was very infamous because of its totally anti-institutionalized, anti-foundationalist. anti academic all kind of anti establishment activities uh, it it blurred the borders between traditional scholarship cyberpunk sci-fi music journalism it was all we can say totally post modern and totally counter cultural in its uh, execution fringed interdisciplinary activities virtual futures viro technology conferences and its journal abstract culture it disturbed the philosophy department the then philosophy department and obviously it resulted in the termination of the unit but still sadi plant is a very important name in studies uh, cultural studies both for her, uh, we can say um, her endorsement of this accelerationism which is directly derived from cybernetics a very important term Uh, not only in cultural studies but technological sphere is hypermedia now what is hypermedia the term was coined by ted nelson this person ted Mel nelson he has also coined the term hypertext now what is hypertext or hypermedia non textual information if we are talking about hypermedia images movies and sounds that is connected together and that are available to a viewer a reader a user and he can curate it she can curate it according to the use so hypertext is only about text while hypermedia include all type of information in all type of forms or in other words we can say you can see hypertext is only about text 
while hypermedia have video text and images all these things it is defined by oxford english dictionary as a method of structuring information in different media different media because we can say audio visual textual and for a single user whereby related items are connected in the same way as a hypertext just like in a hypertext a text beyond the text a user can uh, have an array of text at the index of his finger similarly hypermedia have all kind of information different media so it is an advancement to hypermedia distinction between hypertext and hy hypermedia lies in the content of the document if it is only text then it is hypertext and if it is uh, there is another medium like audio or video then it becomes hypermedia now critics uh, like landlord landlord they have linked hypermediation with modern critical theory especially works of structuralist and post structuralist theorists like roland barthes now barthes describes his ideal text as containing networks that interact without any one of them being able to surpass the rest now there is no one particular controlling text network text is a network of codes text has no beginning it is reversible we can access to it by several entrances a writer has no control over the text the reader has many entries to the text the reader can reverse uh, it his ideal text what he differentiate between writerly text and readerly text now a writerly text is like a hypermedia a reader becomes a producer rather than the consumer of the text and open writerly text hypermedia also allows for maximal involvement of their readers because a reader can decide what uh, he or she wants to uh, get through this access in the realm of art now hypermedia have uh, uh, allowed creation of new kinds of artistic and literary experiences for example there is michael joyce hypertext tale afternoon a uh, story now why it is a hypertext tale because the meaning of the narrative changes radically depending on whether the reader follows that default arrangement of information or explores the text more carefully the way the reader explores the text it changes the the essential meaning of the text similarly if we uh, look uh, at the recent popular novels like don delillo's underworld and david foster wallace infinite jest they are considered to be hypertext because the not only the text written is important but there are many footnotes and in text links our last term for the day is kitsch now what is kitsch kitsch is very important terms dear friends for the coming exam it is often synonymous with trash as a descriptive term kitsch is derived from the german word kitchen which is to collect rubbish from a street oxford english dictionary defines kitsch as a uh, render worthless to make something without value classifying kitsch object as characterized by worthless pretentiousness there is there is only pretension but these are earlier uh, we can say definition now jean baudrillard we know that he is one of the most important uh, theoretician of post modernism he gave his definition of kitsch as the kitsch object is commonly understood as one of that great army of trashy object made of plaster of paris or some such imitation material gallery of cheap junk accessories folksy knickknacks souvenirs lamp shades or fake african masks which proliferate everything according to bordrillard we have basically kitschified everything that was once considered to be artistic even take uh, the photograph of mona lisa earlier it used to be an exclusive one single painting but now there are numerous copies and models and lockets and so many things that it has become a kitschified object it first gained common usage in the jargon of munich art dealers who used this term to designate 
cheap artistic stuff which was easily available for the tourists pouring into the city. Kitsch tends to mimic the effect produced by real sensory experiences because it presents highly charged imagery, language, music and it triggers an automatic unreflective emotional reaction. It is not the reaction which is born out of real experience of beauty but it is the experience of feeling that we are looking at a beauty. In fact, Milan Kundera, he very effectively defined kitsch, uh, the quality he called the kitsch's second tier. What does he mean by it? He says that kitsch causes two tears to flow in quick succession. The first tear says, how nice to see the children running in the grass. It is the actual feeling. The second tier says, how nice to be moved together with all mankind by children running in the grass. It is the second tier which makes kitsch kitsch. So kitsch is not about the real experience. It is about the feeling that we are feeling the same with the uh, totality of mankind. We are possessing the same object. We are having the same taste, the same art. It is so we can say almost the commodification of culture and art. In postmodernist theory, kitsch is seen as the reduction of aesthetic objects or ideas into easily marketable forms. That is why I called it commodification of culture. Some theorists of postmodernism see the kitschification as one of the symptoms of postmodern condition where nothing is real but rather uh, simulcra, copy of the copy. We don't know about the real object. We only have copy of copies which is once again uh, the concept simulcra given by Jean Baudrillard. Okay, dear friends, that's all for today. I hope I was able to put sense into these terms and make clear to you. If you have any query or if you want to say something about these videos, please put it in a comment or you can WhatsApp me for PDFs. Thank you for supporting.